Having a high-end gaming PC is a lot of fun because you can overclock it. But if you're not the sort of person who has desk space in your small apartment or you're living in a dorm and you don't have a monitor, you probably have a TV. And it's a little known fact that you can actually overclock your TV so that all those extra FPS you're rendering over 60, you can actually see those and make the whole gaming motion a lot smoother. So, how far can you overclock a TV? Well, I have a couple TVs to test. The first one is a Westinghouse TV that I paid $200 for three and a half years ago. So it's a pretty cheap TV by today's standards, and it was 1080p at 60Hz stock. The other TV I'll be testing is one I actually got from my grandparents, and it's a higher-end Samsung model, also 1080p, but it's like five or six years old, and it goes at 59Hz stock, according to Windows. So, the results are in. With the Westinghouse TV, I got it up to 77 hertz. I originally tried 80 and got this message. Dialed it back down to 79 and 78. Still got the same message, but as soon as I only overclocked it to 77 hertz, then I got this message. And as you can see here, it's rendering perfectly happy V-Sync locked to 77 hertz in Unigine Valley. And as for the higher-end Samsung TV, I kept overclocking it in 5 Hz intervals all the way up to 90 Hz, which is crazy for a TV that age. However, when I took a closer look and ran some 3D benchmarks on it, specifically Unigen Valley, I could see that while it was indeed rendering 90 pictures a second, they were some pretty crappy pictures. As you can see here, there's a lot of vertical line nonsense going on, which really ruins the whole experience. So I kept dialing back the overclock from 90Hz, and eventually I got it down to 78, at which point I could really no longer notice the lines. They may have still been there, so maybe an overclock of 75Hz would be best for it, but if the lines are gone, then so are my worries. I don't know for sure because I'm not a TV manufacturing expert, but I feel like if I left it at 90 hertz, there would probably be some kind of long-term damage if I had it doing that for several hours a day, every day. Three days later... Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video half as much as I enjoyed making it. I'm pretty surprised that you can get a 25% overclock out of these TVs. That's pretty impressive. There is a noticeable difference going from 60Hz to 75 Not a huge one, but still, it makes gaming a lot smoother. So, whenever I get a TV, I'll be sure to overclock it in future. Leave a comment down below. If you have a TV, how far did you get it to overclock? Is the overclocking worse on 4K TVs? I'd like to see a bunch of data in the comments below, and maybe we could take a look at that in the future. Thanks so much, see you in the next one.